Hello, listeners, and welcome to the latest footnote episode of the Fantasy Animation Podcast with me, Chris Holiday, and me, Alex Sargent. So we are jumping off of um, kind of recent discussions we've had about the, the family film, children's film, um, popular Hollywood cinema, uh, and a term that I'm certainly not too familiar with. Alex, I feel like it's something maybe that engages mm, fantasy. I think I'm glad we've still got Noel in the studio yeah. for our RT episode to help us through with this. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about Double address. Double address. Double which address. also may go under other names, which you will explain. Okay. Um, so this is a term we sort of skirted around when we did our conversation of ET, but perhaps we could clarify a little bit for. for but for also, listeners. I feel like it crops up in in you know I know that kind of Cat Lester's work on on horror cinema for children uh, and a lot yeah. of you know I remember our podcast on on Shrek too. This idea of jokes for children, jokes sure. for adults, and and so it's something that often crops up. Certainly with the discussion of animation, that that. Yeah. It's, it's for children, but also there's enough meat and potatoes in there for adults to kind of get their teeth into. So, so yeah. if, anyone, if any students are out there who want to do a, um, um, uh, an essay on, on, on the dual address of, of, of children's films or family films, or if you're just a researcher and you want this fleshed out, don't worry, you've got Noel here to help us yep. through this. Um, and Noel, you've only got 10 minutes, so, so, uh, okay, no, let, pressure. so no pressure whatsoever. But what is dual address? Go. Okay, so dual address. Uh, the, so there's different terms. Um, this all comes from the children's literature arena, essentially. The idea is is that children's fiction, including films, TV, media, literature, works on different levels. So there's the basic address to children, but also there might be another layer of attraction for adults as well. So it's a hypothetical category that sometimes can be tricky to apply. But the essential schema are single address, basically the film, the object, literature, book, whatever it is, appeals, is intended for only for young children. And there the probably isn't any kind of subtext or adult dimension to the text whatsoever. Then there's this thing called uh, double address. Double address is the idea that there's two layers of address the basic text for the children and a kind of superstructure almost mm -hmm. for adults. And that other layer might be composed of any number of things. It might be the addition of adult jokes that children wouldn't actually understand, but which wouldn't disturb their engagement with the text. Okay. So that's actually one of the important elements of it. The double address is perceived only by the adults. The children just see the base element, as it were. Okay. So it might be adult jokes, it might be adult stars, it might be references to politics, it might be intertextual references. Um, so there's a number of different ways it can manifest itself. Okay. And is there a distinction to be made between a moment that can be read in two ways and a, f and a text containing two different collections of moments? So I think about that, the, the adult joke that the child doesn't get... Yep. That's there for the adult, but it won't disturb the child's engagement. Whilst there is, you know, we've been talking when we talked about ET. There are moments in ET that are likely to be interpreted one way if you're a child and one way as an adult. Or is that yep. all part of the same uh, phenomena here? Um, I suppose one of the really good examples of double address is in ET, where I think Potato Head's face becomes misaligned, okay. and he turns to one of the other characters and says, "I'm Picasso." Toy Story. Toy, toy Story. What did I say? E.T. E.T. E.T.'s on the mind. In <laughs> Toy Story. Yes. I'm Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Um, so the other character says, I don't get it, and walks off. That kind of like stands in for the non-comprehending viewer, the child or the grown-up who doesn't understand Picasso reference. But if you get it, then that's a reference that you understand. So that's a good example of double address. There's a visual gag, a basic visual gag, which is still kind of like funny, works as a sight gag on a simple level, but there's also like a more complex mm. level of engagement that only older audiences or more cine literate audiences maybe yeah. can understand. The key thing about that scene and that leads into my question is the bit after where he says, you uncultured swine, because he hasn't got the joke that yeah. the, um, I'm Picasso. Does this then imply that adulthood is more complex and cultured or does it lapse in this double address dual address does it lapse into the notion that things for children have to be because you use the word basic yeah uh, and, and adulthood by very by its definition is more complex and nuanced and, and cultured or is that 
is that, is that not the case? Actually, you know, childhood is very complex, and it's there are writers yeah. like you and Kirkland and yourself that would argue actually that the, the children is a really important category. So I'm just I'm interested in that that distinction this of what is, that might mean. Yeah. This is where the this is where the idea becomes problematic, so right? Because right. because it tends to assume a kind of hierarchy of knowledge and taste and culture. Mm. So in many ways, the kind of hypothetical boundaries of single address and double address and a third one, dual address, which is when a joke, and that would be an, an example maybe, where like the child and the adults are both addressed in a kind of similar way. Okay. Um, so spectacle and adventure, music, they would all be examples of dual address because you don't have to be a particular age to understand or yeah. appreciate them. But one of the interesting things about this is that when you actually look at something that you think might be single address, it can have like, it can appeal to anyone. Mark Twain made some kind of comment in the introduction to, I think it was Tom Sawyer, um, addressing the, uh, like an older uh, reader saying this is about childhood. It's about my childhood and it's about your childhood. And it will make you remember the like, I think he used the term the queer things you, you know, we did when we were children or something on those lines. Mm. So where is that single address or is that double address or is it something different? Is it So these hypothetical boundaries sometimes kind of crumble away, but it's still really useful as a way of understanding text which deliberately program in these additional layers. Yeah. So like animation is like a great example. So I, my question is going to be, are there particular spaces, genres, cycles where dual address and it's, is, is integral? And it seems like animation is often almost as part of that negative assumption or the, the fact that it's a children's medium. Really, you know. um, but it seems that like animation is, is where is a great space for thinking about dual address. I'll, and, and maybe, yeah. I don't know whether fantasy... Maybe yeah, fantasy, fantasy too. But, yeah, but yeah. Why, why... So animation is a great space. So why, why do you think that's the... Well, I mean, I think it really almost stemmed from the fact that in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, there was a, a concerted attempt by studios like Disney and then later Pixar and DreamWorks to broaden the appeal beyond the presumed yeah, yeah. intended base audience of children. And obviously, ch children were not the were never the only audience for these films, you know, for Disney films, classical Disney, whatever. But there was an assumption made particularly by people like Jeffrey Katzenberg that you needed to have a more knowing layer of textuality for films yeah. like Toy Story and then later Shrek would be a really good example. So that's when you started having the deliberate programmed insertion of intertextual references, jokes, allusions to culture, mm. to other types of TV, to media, to memes, but also like references to politics. Um, so the, the various subtexts that you get yeah. in lots about, of animated yeah. movies. Yeah, and I was thinking about the links to the kind of... Coin the, the timeliness of, of this in relation to home video and the ability to kind of rewind and get jokes and Easter eggs and all that kind of culture of, of hunter-gathering that, you know, and even Henry Jenkins is writing books on fandom and, and textual poachers in the early you know, 1992, which accords with exactly... So I, I, I guess I wonder whether dual address is something that is also comes from technology insofar as filmmakers or animators or, or fantasy filmmakers embed this uh, dual address in, mm. knowing that audiences are now capable. It's not going to the cinema and seeing it once, but yep. you, you're you now capable of rewinding. And, and is that is that something that plays into dual address? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the whole idea of replayability came yeah, yeah. in the 80s with the VCR and then DVDs. You have people watching these films multiple times. So the idea is you have to be able to attract people more than once. So right, if you, if you right, get right, these right. little Easter eggs, then yeah. it's perfect. It works the first time in the theatre, but also it works, you know, watching it subsequently. So, and and again, there's like the presumption that if you've got like a really simple text, people are not going to revisit it. Interesting. But this is like a bit of a prejudice at the same time. So this is where we enter complex, murky waters. I so it's, it sounds like it's, it's perhaps a useful word for it to describe an industrial process, because I think that yeah. this is happening behind the scenes. They yeah. are thinking about these kinds of things. Yeah. But whether it works to kind of analyze the spectatorship of these sort of movies it might start to because yeah where when is a film got a single address you know and we can yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so i think from from a kind of spectatorial level it's unstable yeah. but it's definitely really valuable as a way of thinking about how texts are constructed yeah, yeah, yeah. so we've got a couple of minutes i was gonna say perfect time we've got a couple of minutes so normally we'd sort of say yeah. um are there where do pe if, if people want to know where go, this term yeah. came from what where do, where do they go and uh, I think it came from a book, or I certainly know it from a book by 
Barbara Wall. Okay. Is that a literary published, analysis? Yes. Or, okay. It's about children's fiction. Okay. Um, published in 1991. It's later been written about by various other people over the years, children's literature people. I've, Me and several other people have picked it up and applied it to children's film. Okay. Um, and I've spoken about it a reasonable length in my book on the children's film. Okay. While at the same time acknowledging that it's a valuable concept, but it's kind of unstable. So... Okay. It's, and, and, it's useful. I and think. a few others, if students want to write an essay on it. So you've got yourself. Um, who? Well, is, is there any consenting voices to this out there? Um, it... Yeah, there's a very, very good piece by Adrian Schober um, on uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, uh, which he calls it uh, the dual addressed family movie, okay. uh, which is in the Family Films and Global Cinema collection. Okay. Um, there's also... Um, Sam Summers' book on DreamWorks, where he talks a lot about intertextual humour. Yeah, great. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got you've got twenty seconds. So, if there's anything else about, maybe we should do this again with a few more adult jokes in. Well, we're going to do it again now. Yeah, dual address. We've Robin done the basic William, version. Robin Williams impressions. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. well, music might be one example. So, if you want to sing as out, Chris. Yeah, I, I'm croaky. I'm just oh, sore throat. Oh, look, we're out of time. Oh no. Oh, uh, uh, and scene. Yeah. Well, that was great. Thank you very yes. much, Noel. Um, there you go. Uh, dual address in ten minutes um, or um, less. <laughs> or less. Uh, thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>